According to the article, Recycle Across America, Standardized Recycling Labels, updated in March 2017 at RecycleAcrossAmerica.org, when U.S. recycling levels reach 75%, it will be the environmental and CO2 equivalent of removing 55 million cars off the roads and will generate 1.1 million jobs in the United States. Just from recycling three out of four bottles you intake, you could help better both the environment and our economy. As first year college students, we all have plenty of extra poly cash to spend at the AB to get that extra drink. But if you make the adjustment of putting your bottle in the recycling bin versus the trash can, it can make a huge difference. And you could avoid being a part of the 25% of Americans that don't recycle. In this speech, I'm going to inform you on excuses people use as to why they don't recycle, the repercussions of those actions, how we can make a change in our communities and institutionally, and what our future will look like if people actually recycle. 25% of Americans don't recycle, according to an article published in 2011 at environmentalleader.com. That's roughly 79 million people. There, uh, there are plenty of excuses as to why people don't. Huffington Post made a graph in August of 2015 of the percentage of why the 25% of Americans say they don't recycle. 25% of those people say it's not accessible or convenient to where they live. 10% says it takes up too much time. Another 10% says they always forget. 8% says because of the cost. 6% says they're not sure what recyclable and what's not. 3% says they don't feel recycling efforts will make a difference. 2% say they don't care about recycling slash don't think it's important. And 1% don't understand the environmental benefit. The rest said none of the above. The repercussions of these excuses are drastic. And people don't make changes. The environmental impact will affect our future generations. Landfills are growing and growing. Today, the average American throws out 1,000 pounds of trash each year. And and in total, Americans generate about 250 million tons of trash just last year, according to US EPA estimates. Landfills have a numerous amount of consequences. For example, they release greenhouse gases, pollute groundwater, and generate carbon emissions from waste movement, which not only kills our environment, but hurts us too. But it doesn't only hurt humans, but trash in coastal, coastal cities often ends up in our oceans. Ocean animals are hurt and killed by ingesting small bits of residual plastic, as you can see in the photo with the turtle. Small ocean life can get stuck in the caps of plastic water bottles or in plastic six pack holders like in the photo with the seal. An animal may mistake a plastic bottle for prey and try to eat it, resulting in fatal consequences. On the right is a picture of a bird, and these were the things it mistook for food. Now I bet after seeing those photos, you are inclined to make a change, but you're probably asking how? How do we get 79 people in America to recycle? Well, we motivate and educate. One way to motivate people is to give them an incentive to recycle. In Cherry Hill, New Jersey, each household measured the amount they recycled and the city awarded them with points. Recycling rates went up 137%. The households were able to use their points at retailers and companies, for example, home Whole Foods, Rite Aid, YoPlay, Home Depot, and McDonald's. Those were just a tiny fraction of the companies that partnered up with this program. Another way to make a change with the recycling rates is to educate from a young age, but then be consistent throughout high school. 
incorporate into schools curriculums on how and what to recycle and the consequences if we don't. Starting with the younger generation will implant into their heads the need and being consistent with forming a people on what to recycle can help America's problem. By motivating and educating people, we can make a huge impact on the human, we can make a huge difference on the impacts humans have. Now imagine a world where everyone recycled. Well, if you can't put that image in your mind, let me, let me put it out there for you. Let's start with the economy. Recycling is a $200 billion industry in the United States. And Kay Bailey from EcoCycle.org say that recycling creates at least nine more jobs than landfills and incinerators. In her article, Zero Waste Creates Jobs. Jobs are created in collecting, processing, manufacturing, preparing, and fixing up of refurbishing of discards. Not only could it help U.S. manufacturing, but it could also be valuable. It could also be a valuable export to other countries, where manufacturing is key in their economy, like India and China. Now for the environment. Recycling conser conserves Earth's natural resources. According to an article called How Can Recycling Save Natural Resources, 40% of our waste comes from paper. If all of this paper was recycled instead, we could save millions of trees. Recycling one ton of paper would save 17 trees and 7,000 gallons of water, along with fuel and energy. Another interesting thing about paper is that it can be recycled up to seven times before it starts to fall apart. So even previously recycled paper can go in the recycling bin again and again. Doesn't helping our economy and earth sound like something that we can all do? Well, simply, it is. As college students, we have a decision to make here on our campus. Standing up for our Earth and future generations of America can start with us here and now. So when all of you are finishing up your suja juice or Minute Maid pineapple juice from the avenue, make the decision to put it in the recycling. Don't pee a part of the 25%. Thank you.